Hey guys, today in this video, we are going to discuss about one of the very important uh, disease which is called as the Sturge-Weber syndrome. The Sturge-Weber syndrome is also called as encephalotrigeminal angiomatosis. So let's break down this in more detail. Encephalo refers to brain, especially in the Sturge-Weber syndrome. There are abnormal blood vessels called as angiomas present in the brain, particularly in the leptomeninges. What are leptomeninges? These are nothing but the membranes that cover the brain and the spinal cord. And what is the trigeminal? Trigeminal pertains to the trigeminal nerve, which is the fifth cranial nerve responsible for sensory innervation of the face. So what happens in the Sturge-Weber syndrome is there are angiomas involving the trigeminal nerve and its branches, especially V1 and V2 branches, leading to the characteristic facial port wine stains or birthmarks. That's the reason we call it as trigeminal involvement. Coming towards the last one, the last word is called as angiomatosis. Angiomatosis refers to the presence of multiple blood vessel malformations known as angiomas in various tissues or organs. And especially in the Sturge-Weber syndrome, angiomas are found in the brain and face along with possible involvement in the eye as well as the other organs. Therefore, it is also called as encephalotrigeminal angiomatosis. Got it? Yeah. Now, we need to know that it is pretty rare congenital vascular disorder. And uh, the most important manifestation what we will see in the Sturge-Weber syndrome is the facial capillary malformation. This facial capillary malformation often referred as the port wine stain. Okay, And this capillary venous malformations especially affecting the brain and the eye. So these are the two important organs. What you need to remember in the Sturge-Weber is brain and the eye. Now when we talk about the genetics over here, Sturge-Weber is caused by somatic mosaic mutation of GNAQ gene. Remember this, this is very, very important. What type of mutation? It is a somatic mosaic mutation of GNAQ gene. So, what happens with this? So, this mutation is actually a gain of function mutation in one copy of gene. So, because of the gain of function mutation, there will be malformation of the capillaries. So what exactly this GNAQ is doing here? The GNAQ gene encodes for guanine nucleotide binding protein. So a G protein subunit alpha Q that functions mainly to regulate intracellular signaling pathways and this is where the mutations occur. And whenever we talk about these mutations, a very, very interesting as well as important point for you to notice, these mutations do not occur in the germline and therefore cannot be passed on to offspring. That's the reason we call it as non-heritable disorder. Remember that it is the non-heritable disorder because these mutations do not occur in the germline and therefore cannot be passed on to the offspring, right? Now, now let us see the picture of this particular like patient. So if you see this, especially here, and a small portion of the patients have, uh, especially in the Sturge-Weber syndrome, do not have neurological abnormalities. And uh, the neurological abnormalities uh, are mainly associated with GNA11 pathogenic variants, okay? So GNA pathogenic variants will not be having any neurological manifestations and may be milder than typical Sturge-Weber syndrome, which is usually caused by GNAQ pathogenic variants, okay? Now, so as I already mentioned you earlier also a couple of times that the most common presentation of the Sturge-Weber syndrome is port wine strain. Right, We can see here in this picture very clearly, which is also known as nevus flamius or birthmark. Right, So, this is the most common type of vascular malformation. Usually, 
it occurs in 0.3% of newborn infants but however only small portion of the children with port wine stain have sturge weber syndrome right and um, when you see the exact location of the lesion over here um this is typically present on the forehead and the upper eyelid which is primarily in the distribution of the first and second divisions of the trigeminal nerve anyway i will show it to you here now you can see in this image very clearly so whenever we talk about uh, the trigeminal nerve which has three divisions v1 v2 as well as v3 so v1 stands for ophthalmic division v2 stands for maxillary division and v3 stands for mandibular division so it is clearly mentioned that whenever the trigeminal nerve is involved it often involves v1 and v2 components of the trigeminal nerve which means the dermatomal distribution of the cranial nerve 5 that is v1 and v2 which is usually unilateral in nature so if you see this image pretty clearly only here the v1 component that is ophthalmic component is involved and the maxillary component is involved but the mandibular component is not often involved in the sturge weber syndrome right yeah and whenever we talk about this particular lesion what you are seeing in this picture and this lesion does not blanch with pressure so what is the meaning of this whenever we say that this lesion the macular vascular lesion whenever this lesion does not blanch with pressure meaning the color or appearance of that area does not change when the pressure is applied and released okay that is the typical feature what we will say with this macular vascular lesion right now what we do is you can see in this picture uh, this picture clearly explains about uh, the age progression of the cutaneous uh, port vein birthmark and if you see at the younger age especially in the infants that the birthmark is usually apparent from birth uh, it is light pinkish in color right like a pink patch but that can get darker with age you can see in this image very clearly right that can darker with age corresponding to progressive dilation of the affected capillaries in the dermis and if you see the patient in adulthood they may develop soft tissue hypertrophy or nodularity in the absence of clinical intervention right yeah and uh, some patients have ipsilateral arteriovenous malformations of the pia mater vessels also right yeah so here especially in the sturge weber syndrome as i mentioned that is mainly characterized by facial capillary malformation also known as port vein stain and also lepto meningeal capillary venous malformations are associated and um, historically these uh, lepto meningeal capillary venous malformation are nothing but called as lepto meningeal angioma usually involving two important organs which i have already mentioned that is brain as well as the eye which mainly occurs in approximately 10 to 20% of the cases when a typical facial lesion is present so remember that so lesion is present in almost 70 to 90 percent of the cases but out of that only 10 to 20 percent of the cases will be having lepto meningeal angioma especially involving the brain as well as the eye now when we talk specifically in children about the visual disturbances children often suffer from visual disturbances most often they suffer from hemi anopia right and often present with bufthalmus which is markedly enlarged eye mainly due to congenital glaucoma that leads to retained aqueous humor right so hemi anopia and associated with bufthalmus so is a classical manifestation under visual disturbances what we will see in the children right and also the children of the sturge weber develop progressive neurological deterioration so they usually develop seizures right we can see here these are very very important guys for you to remember what are the neurological manifestations we often see in children and uh, second is the intellectual disability 
So children with the Sturge Weber syndrome typically develop normally for several months after birth, but uh, after which they manifest a developmental delay. And third important manifestation what we are seeing over here is the hemiparesis. So hemiparesis is nothing but weakness or the partial paralysis affecting one side of the body. And the fourth manifestation what we can see here is the hemisensory deficit. So hemisensory deficit is also called as hemisensory loss or maybe hemianesthesia, which mainly refers to a condition in which there is a loss or impairment of sensation on the one side of the body, right? Yeah. So this is what we need to know about the clinical manifestations case. Let us move on to the diagnosis part. In the diagnosis part is mainly based upon the demonstration of the facial capillary malformations and also leptomeningeal capillary venous malformations, right? Yeah. But in general, eye exam is performed. So eye exam is mainly performed uh, because uh, uh, for the measurement of intraocular pressure, especially to rule out glaucoma in the patient. And EEG is performed mainly to detect the seizure activity because which is uh, very severe in children. Now, uh, diagnosis can be done by imaging, uh, imaging modalities. And the preferred neuroimaging technique for the diagnosis of Sturge Weber syndrome, always remember it is brain MRI. Brain MRI. Remember guys, the preferred neuroimaging technique for the diagnosis of Sturge Weber syndrome is brain MRI. Brain MRI with what contrast? With what contrast? Gadolinium contrast. Right? Gado linium contrast very 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 important point gadolinium contrast which usually demonstrate the presence of leptomeningeal capillary venous malformations and also it also explains that the extent of involvement with brain structures so this is what we need to remember now what we will do is we will see the picture over here the imaging picture what we can see here and uh, this is the image from a 64-year-old patient suffering from Sturge Weber syndrome, uh, presents with the epilepsy as well as severe intellectual disability. And mainly when we see the panel A as well as B, which is uh, performed by non-contrast bone window, which clearly shows an extensive bilateral gyriform calcification usually we can see with the evidence of curvilinear pattern which is often called as tram track sign what we could clearly see in the panel a as well as b image now moving towards the other images present in the panel which is c and d which is a flare mri which clearly shows an extensive atrophy of left frontal and parietal lobes, right? And uh, mainly in the E and F, we could see the post-contrast MRI in transverse axial and coronal planes, coronal planes which we could see in the panel G and axial in the E as well as F, which clearly shows the leptomeningeal enhancement, which is usually consistent with leptomeningeal capillary venous malformations in both of the cerebral hemispheres. So in addition, a choroid enlargement is also noted, mainly if you see the panel D, uh, F as well as G. In D, F as well as G, we could clearly see the choroid enlargement and also which usually correlates with the extent um, of the disease, right? Yeah, so this is the uh, imaging modality what uh, Majority of you should know because this is how they ask in the exams, right? So diagnosis is mainly done by what is the gold standard diagnosis guys? Brain MRI with gadolinium contrast. You have to remember this for your exams. Now, when we talk about uh, the treatment part of uh, Sturge Weber's, remember guys, treatment usually depends upon the uh, treating the symptoms or clinical manifestations, we can say that. And the management usually focuses on controlling seizures and glaucoma if they are present in the patient, right? And um, 
Pulsed laser therapy is usually recommended for vast majority of the cases for the removal of the port vein stain. So this is how the treatment uh, can be done for the patient suffering from Sturge-Weber syndrome. So this is what we need to know about the Sturge-Weber syndrome. So as a summary, what we will do is we concentrate on the most important points of the Sturge-Weber. So remember the Sturge-Weber syndrome is also called as encephalotrigeminal angiomatosis and usually associated with facial capillary malformation, especially in 70 to 90 percent of the cases referred as port wine stain and um, capillary venous malformations usually affect the brain as well as the eye and in the genetics JNAQ mutations are seen which are somatic mosaic mutations which are not uh, heritable and um, there is a macular vascular lesion uh, which is usually unilateral in nature especially on the dermal distribution of the trigeminal nerve involving the dermatomal uh, section of uh, V1 as well as V2, uh, dermatomal distribution. And also, uh, the visual disturbances more commonly seen in the children will be hemianopia and usually associated with buphthalmus, which is enlarged eye. And children usually develop the progressive neurological deterioration in the form of seizures, intellectual disability, hemiparesis, and hemisensory deficit. And um, imaging the most common imaging modality will be the brain MRI with the gadolinium contrast and treatment mainly focuses on controlling seizures as well as glaucoma and pulsed laser therapy is used for the removal of the port vein stain. So all these are the important points what we need to remember about the Sturge-Weber syndrome.